All right, number eight on our related rate uh, handout here is trough problem. We've got a trough 10 feet long, and its ends are isosceles triangles. All right, so let me try to draw a vague, the resembling picture of that. So kind of a cross section. Here's what we've got. It's a triangular. Isosceles just means these two, uh, these two sides are the same. Um, and it's ten feet, uh, ten feet long. So I'll just kind of draw. Establish what is it? What is it we're looking for? All right. So yeah, that it's 18 inches tall. But as time goes along, really what we're interested in is that how deep it is and how fast that that's rising. And so if I've got that water level, <clears throat> here's what I'm going to call H. H is going to be that uh, depth of the water. So let me let me focus on just the triangle here and draw it kind of a little bigger. So what I'm interested in is this, this water level. How high that is. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm looking for is how fast that height is changing. So what I'm looking for here, so let's first of all establish that. What I'm looking for here is how fast does that water level change? So dH over dt, that's what I'm looking for, is dH over dt. Now, what, uh, what else do I have here? I mean, I've, I've got the measurements here, but let's talk about this. It's being filled at a rate of 15 feet cubed per minute. What? Expression could I label that as? That's the rate at which what is changing? The rate is 15 feet cubed per minute. Isn't that the rate the volume is changing? That's dv over dt. So I've got, I'm looking for dh over dt. I've got dv over dt is 15 feet cubed per minute. <clears throat> and I want how fast the water level is changing at one foot deep. So that would be the H. Of course, the H value is one foot. All right. So what's, uh, what's the formula? Well, the formula I need then is I need a volume formula. I need a volume for this, this water. How could I, how could I get that? <clears throat> well, there's not a trough volume in the reference pages, unfortunately. But here's how this works. Basically what I've got is I've got a triangle here, and I'm not talking about the big triangle, you know, I could, but really I'm, I'm focusing on this water. If I, if I extend that back, then I, I need that volume. <clears throat> well, here's how you can do that. If you've got a, whatever area cross-section it is, if you take that cross-sectional area, 
times your lean, you've got to call it the trough volume. If you take the cross-sectional area times your lean, then that gives you your, um, your volume. Okay? So, our uh, cross-sectional area, I've got a triangle. <clears throat> and the area of a triangle is one-half base times height, where this is, our base is here. Did you need something? Yeah, I wanted to tell everybody that the tutoring center has gotten moved to the new building. Right. We're all set up and ready to roll. So we're at Hastar Hall 109A. So okay. come on over and find us over there. Okay. And nothing's downstairs now. It's all gone. Tutoring is in Hastar Hall. And if you will tell your other classes, I would appreciate it. I will. That way I won't have to catch you all. Sure, thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so in this case, we've got a triangle. And so... We'll do the one half of base times the height. <clears throat> Where uh, the base is <clears throat> be that B right there. Now, good news is on the length here, um, so as the water level rises, B and H are changing. But the length, the length will not be changing. The length is always going to be 10 feet. And remember back on our discussions previously, we said if there's a fixed value, a value that doesn't change as, as whatever else is changing, you can plug that in. And so that, that's one good thing here. Our length is not changing, it's constant. So I can plug that in right up front as 10. I can do that here. Now the H is one foot where I want it, but is that fixed? No, that's changing. The height, the water level height is changing. So I'm not going to plug in the H to be one here because that's that's not a fixed amount. That's just the amount I chose. But the, the length here is constant, so I can plug it in. So that's good news because that makes it uh, if I go ahead and do the half times the 10, that would give me 5 B times H. Okay, so there's the formula. However, there's a still a little more work here to do. Here's why. I'm looking for dh over dt. I know dv over dt. But if I do the derivative as it is right now, I have a little problem because if I do the derivative of this, I am going to have a db over dt. And I don't know. It's not provided. But here's what I can do. <clears throat> In this particular case, what I can do is I can <clears throat> change this. I can get, since I don't know anything about the derivative of b, let me get uh, B in terms of H. That's what, what I'm going to do next year. Get B in terms of H. Here's how I'm going to do that. Go back to my uh, cross section here. And if you'll notice here, I've got, uh, I've got some similar triangles. The big triangle and then the water level triangle. The big triangle and then the little triangle. Well, those are similar triangles. They have the same angles. And, but when you have similar triangles, those sides are in proportion, which means if I look at the ratio of B to H, it's going to be the same ratio as this side, which is, uh, that's 30 inches. is to then the height all the way up, which is 18 inches. Thirty to eighteen, I mean we could change the feet, but it, it doesn't really matter here. So thirty is to eighteen, which does uh, simplify if you want to go ahead and do that, uh, reduces by six by thirty. <clears throat> Are you with me there? See that relationship? Yeah, so the, the little b to the h is the same as the 30 is to the 18 because it's similar triangles. Well, what that gives me is a way to, to write b in terms of h because if I multiply both sides by h now, I've got uh, b equals 5 thirds h. 
and I can substitute that in very nicely for B right there. So the volume will equal 5 times 5 thirds H, because that's what B is, times H. And now I don't have B involved in this equation. So that's volume equals, that'd be 25 over 3 times H squared, H times H. Aha. Took a little bit of doing, but now I have a volume equation, and it's a volume in terms of only H. So I'm, I'm in good shape because I know, I know some stuff here. So is that so far so good? See where I got all that? All right. <clears throat> so now we're ready to uh, DDT. Take the derivative with respect to T of this. So that'll be DV over DT. So I'm doing this. DDT and this. So it'll be dv over dt, the derivative of that, just one dv dt, dv over dt. Over here I'll have what, 25 thirds times 2h, but I'm doing the derivative with respect to t, so it'll be dh over dt. Now I'm ready to plug things in. dv over dt, we already said that's 15. Uh, that would be 50 over 3 times h, which is 1. And dh over t, t is what I'm looking for. <coughs> so, it looks like 15, if I divide, uh, now we need to, but I'm going to divide by 50 thirds. <coughs> um, plug in your calculator, but it's 15 divided by 50 thirds, which would be times 3 over 50. So that's going to be 45 over 50, or 0.9. However, you need to get that. 9 tenths or, nine -tenths or 0.9. <coughs> that's going to be my dh over dt. And the units, the units of h would be feet per <coughs> times minute. How about that? Fun stuff, huh? All right, well, let's tackle number nine because it's it's sort of similar. A little similar. Is that okay? Any question? Number eight? Good with that? All right. Just swim for. section is 25 feet long. So we pull this 25 feet long. This cross section is well. Alright. So that's telling me, yeah, it's 25 feet this way. 25 feet back this way. So that's the length of the swimming pool. The pool is being filled at a rate, so uh, <clears throat> it's being filled at a rate of 0.5 feet cube per minute. So that's my dv over dt. So dv over dt is 0.5 feet cubed per minute. How fast is the water level rising when the depth is 3 feet? Well, if I think about it, all right, so I want my depth to be 3 feet. That puts me where? Well, if this is 5 feet here, from, from bottom to, to that, that line right there, that's 5. 3 feet is in here. So my water level is down in here. 
That's important. <clears throat> okay, um, so that's my water level, somewhere in there. That's my height of my water. So again, I'm, what? how fast is the water level rising? So again, I'm looking for that dH over dT. <clears throat> well, <laughs> let's look at it. My volume, what's going to be my volume of, uh, of that water? Well, it's not a triangular, triangular cross section. The cross section here, well, it's it's a trapezoid, is what it is. But <clears throat> here's here's how we can handle it. All right, so I need to take the cross sectional area times the length, which uh, good news again, the length is 25 feet. It's fixed. <clears throat> But how do I get that cross section? Like, well, like I said, it's a trapezoid, and um, <clears throat> for a trapezoid, it's uh, one half. Times your, um, let's call it V1 and V2. I think I want to call that. Here, here's the area of a trapezoid. I've got, if I've got a trapezoid, this is B1, this is B2, and that's my H. So it's one half B1 plus B2 times H. So that's that's what I'm, <coughs> I'm using there. That's this cross sectional area. Good news is the length is fixed, so I can go ahead and plug that into 25. Also, good news here is B1, which is this lower side here, as water level right, it's fixed too, isn't it? It's fixed. That's fixed. So that's good. Since it's fixed, I can plug it in. 20. B2, on the other hand, is an H, not so much fixed. So see if you can handle that for right now. Is that okay? With me so far? All right, so B2 is up here. Here is a good thing about B2, though. It's, it's varying. But uh, look at this. So here's, here's this side where I can draw on it a little more. So I know this is 20. This is my height. And this is B2. <clears throat> and it's as one level rises, it you know that B2 expands, the height expands. Well, let's focus in on this uh, this piece right here. Let's draw this this height right here. Here's one way. Here's one way to kind of look at this. If I draw that height over there instead, and that's going to go up until you get um, until you get there. Here's, here's what we can do with that. This B2, which goes from here all the way to there, part of it's fixed. B2 is, uh, let's call it, it's this amount plus this amount. Let's call that little amount, little b there. B2 is 20 plus little b. With me? 20 plus little b. The reason I 
do it this way is because notice here, if I do it that way, I've got that similar triangle thing again. So if I call that the little b here, <clears throat> I can get that little b in terms of h. By using the similar triangles because that h, which goes from here to here, b to h is uh, the same as, what is this right here? Well, that, that's analogous to that. So that amount there is 2. And then that height there is, uh, the big height here is 5, right? So B to H is 2 to 5, because that's 2 and that's 5. So I can get a relationship there from that little B to that H. So it makes sense? Using the similar triangle again. Well, <clears throat> so B2 is 20 plus little b, but I can get this little b in terms of h because now, since I've got that, multiply both sides by h, and you got b is 2 fifths h, or point, let's call it 0.4 h. Two, 2 divided by 5 is 0.4. And so, B2 is 20 plus that 20, no less 20, and then this b turns out to be 0.4h, so plus 0.4h. That's, that's what I can go here and plug in for my b2, because I don't want two variables on that side, I only want one variable. See where I got all that? So that'd be 20 plus, and then b2 is another 20, plus 0.4h times the h times 25 is this, and so, uh, well, <clears throat> you got your half times your 25, that's 12.5, uh, and then here that'll be 40 plus 0.4H times an H. So now it's just, uh, <clears throat> let's just go ahead and multiply this out. Um, Multiply the h in there, so it'd be 12.5 times 40h plus 0.4h squared. And let's go ahead and multiply the 12.5 in there, so we're almost got this whipped. Twelve point five times forty. that to be 500 H plus 12.5 times 0.4 is 5. Oh, that works out nicely. H squared. So yeah, if you multiply that 12.5 times those in there. <clears throat> yeah. Believe it. Turns into this Relatively nice little equation. We can figure how to get there, but question? See where we got that? So now we're looking for dh dt, so d dt both sides. So we've got db over dt is this side. This side would be 500. The derivative of h is 1, but I need a dh dt with that plus 10h, and again it's h doing the derivative of t, so I'm in dh over dt with that as well. Okay? Now let's plug in what we know. We know db over dt is 0.5, 500 dh over dt is what I'm looking for. The h, well I said let's do the dh dt when the height is 3. I've got to write that down. Yeah. So I've got h is 3. So I've got 0.5 equals 500 dh dt plus 30 dh dt. 
so that'd be 530 VH over DT. So we'll divide by 530. And so we get a very small number here. 0.5 divided by 530. <coughs> oh, yeah. It says 9.43 minus, it says this. Blah, blah, blah. E to negative 4. Remember, that's just scientific notation, the way my calculator gives it scientific notation. So this means four places back, let's put the decimal in, so it's 0 0.00. 09433. Leave it there. Um, 0.0094. It's dh over dt, so that'd be feet per minute. 